Welcome back to our system design series. Today we are going to explain in-memory databases, a powerful tool for applications that require light, um, lighting, like lighting fast data access and high performance. In-memory databases are becoming incredibly, incredibly and increasingly popular, especially for use cases where speed is crucial and critical like caching, real-time analytics, and financial applications. So, what is exactly in-memory database? So, unlike traditional databases that store data on disk, in-memory databases keep data in the system's RAM, which is random access memory, which makes read and write operation extremely fast. Think of it think of in-memory databases as um, super super charged data stores that table that uh, that trade durability for speed because data is stored in memory in memory so access times are reduced to um, milliseconds or microseconds compared to re uh, retrieve slower access time on disk based storage so let's take an example of a system where we need to use a um, in-memory database. So we have a client and this client is sending requests to the server and the servers will have like a read and write operations on the DB. So let's say that the, 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 the client sends read operation to read a specific product. The, the product will be, the server will send the read operations to the database, the database will send the object back and it will be sent back to the client. Let's say the client want to see the exact same object again and again and again and again, the exact same product. There where we use in-memory storage, in-memory cache could be in, um, could handle that. So the in-memory cache, let's say that we have a cache or like in-memory storage that would be in memory. We said it's uh, extremely fast. So we can store in it the frequently accessed data. So when the user tries to access the same product again, we will store it in the cache. Like when uh, at the beginning, the database, when the database returning it to the client, the server will store it in the cache. So when the client tries to ask about, uh, ask about the same product again, it will be served from the cache, will be way more faster. Basically, it will be, uh, no, no, not like that. It will be served from the cache instead of being served from the database. So it will be way more faster. It's like incredibly fast. And also this reduces the load on our database. Also it improves the user experience. We satisfy the user, improves the performance, reduce latency. So it has a lot of good things. So this is one of the things that we can use in memory storage for. So some proper examples if in memory storage are include like Redis, Memcached and Amazon Elastic Cache. These databases are often used as cache layer in front of traditional databases um, that to, to speed up frequently access data and also to, to reduce the load on the databases. So let's try to think about um, how this will work. Like, does we only use in-memory databases for caching? I guess this is not um, not only caching, but caching is one of the most common uses for of in-memory databases, and uh, is as um, a caching layer by storing frequently accessed data in memory. Applications can avoid making extensive queries to the main database over and over and over and over, leading to faster response times. For instance, Redis is commonly used to cache user sessions product catalogs or uh, recently queries, uh, queried uh, data um, to improve the performance of web applications. The second thing that we can use it for, I guess there are four things we can use the in-memory cache. The second thing, it will be like for real-time analysis. Time analysis, analytics, sorry, or uh, analytics. I'm trying to improve my writing. So in memory, in memory databases are also great for applications that need to perform real-time analytics. For example, in financial trading application where prices and trades need to be updated and queried in real time, 
the high speed nature of in memory databases is crucial okay so um lastly we uh, i guess not lastly we have also we can use them for counters like um in games and social platforms often used in memory databases for uh, leaderboards and or counters that need to be updated in real time as users interact with the application since these operations require frequent uh, reads and writes in memory storage ensures they are performed instantly and lastly it's used in the session storage let's put s for storage so Storing session data in memory databases can make session, uh, session handling more efficient, especially in distributed systems where multiple servers need to share user sessions quickly. This ensures a seamless experience as users interact with different parts of your application. However, in memory databases come with some trade offs because uh because basically we because data is stored in uh, um, uh, in memory it's um, it's not persistent if the system goes down all the data in memory are lost this why in memory databases are often used for non-critical data or data that can be easily um, recomputed or retrieved from another source some in memory databases like redis do offer persistence options by predict uh, by uh, periodically writing data to disk but they are still not as durable as traditional databases another consideration is the cost because since ram is more expensive than disk storage the amount of data that can be stored in memory databases is typically limited compared to disk database systems this means you need to be uh, mindful of what data you choose to store in memory to get the best perform performance benefits without increasing unnecessary costs so in memory in memory databases can be used um, alongside uh, traditional uh, uh, disk based databases to create a hybrid architecture for example you might use redis to cache the most frequent access data as you can see in this example okay while a relation database like postgres stores the complete data set persistently this approach allow you to take advantages of speed of in-memory databases while maintaining the durability and reliability of disk-based databases. So that's it for this video. I hope you like my content. If you like my content, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll never miss a video and see you in future.